super exciting edition of Inside Media Weekly. I'm Ryan Bonai. I'm joined again by a distinguished panel of Kevin Bastos. Very patriotic. I like the tie. Thank Very you. Nice. It was Memorial Day yesterday. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Welcome back to I the like show. I like defacing the flag. It's an important part of my day. Okay. <laughs> wow. No. Wow. Technically, you know, it's not supposed to be clothing, is it? It isn't. I think that's a technicality. Mm-hmm. That's all right. It's not a technicality. It's... Not supposed to be. Okay, well, I, I have not read the rules closely. But is a tie clothing? I would. It's an accessory. Yeah, yes. yeah I don't know. I don't know. I, I still think it's not great. Justin Pinto I would agree. here as well. Yes. Again. <laughs> again. Again. Welcome Distinguished. Back, everybody. I like how he throws out those up and down compliments. <laughs> Distinguished again. again. Hey, look, it's a sea otter. He's Yay. He's he on the gone. steps. I don't know what he's doing. Where'd he go? He's, he was there. He's there. Um, I'm not sure what the oh there he is the green strap Aww. is. There's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of trash that's just showing yeah, up. We got the little bucket. Do have any more garbage to throw out there? <laughs> just, Pretend toys. Yes. Just. I got this green sort of ski mask. <laughs> I j- remind me of the I, conversation I just had before coming down here. I used to be the guy that it's hung not a, out outside of the penalty box and hockey games. That is. was my. Did you go now, under and come up? Well, I you think know. so. Yeah. He's, there's a little secret. Oh, <gasps> he's up. Oh, it's a seat. <laughs> And he's down. But he's going to come out over here, I think. Yes. So speaking of down, solo. Ow, that's a rough transition. (laughs) Box office numbers. Mm. Box office numbers. Okay. Okay. Didn't fly so high delivering soft Memorial Day weekend. Um, He made $83 million. The worst part, well, I think it's for the whole weekend, it's over 100 with Friday, right? With Monday. With Monday. Because uh, Friday, no, Saturday, Monday, Sunday. It's, 100, it's 103 is what it's sitting at. Right okay. Uh, the hardest part of this, and uh, take two steps back from it, they expected it to make more, and it didn't. So if they expected it to make, like, 72, this would have been a smash. But that it's predicted to make more, and it didn't, that makes it a failure. That's the dumb irony of this. But it did make less than the others. So. Yes. True. But it also... I mean, we can. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about all the reasons, but mm-hmm. there was just a Star Wars movie that did not deliver on expectations. Correct. Just in December, five little months ago, we were already. And I personally feel like that movie was more of a, a letdown than this movie could have been. True. Because I, I personally didn't think the movie was bad. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Is it my favorite Star Wars movie? No. Is it Rogue One? No. You had low expectations going in. Uh, you know, I, I did. I, like As the movie got closer, I, I had like irrational expectations of it being great for some reason. Like, I was really excited to go, really? and I don't know why. Like I had no reason for it because the reviews were, mm. everyone's like, it's not going to be good. Just get ready. <laughs> it's bad. But, I mean, for some reason, I was really looking forward to it. I don't know why. So do we want to talk solo, like a little review first, or do we want to talk about our reasons for why we think? Uh... No, let's review it first. All right. As the only person who hasn't seen it yet. Oh, yes. But I have no Your problem. review, so you haven't. Please, ha- people who haven't away, seen it, care. please review. <laughs> <laughs> you you do that all the time. It. What is going on with the computer? Oh, Nothing. it's just my screen. Nothing's going you on. You guys are in good shape. I've lost it. So, Well, you do have a, another option where well, you can watch yourself on the giant can, screen, but too. it's me. It's not oh, on the screen. Who is tech directing oh, all, this animal? It all went. Okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> so, Solo, what did you guys think? I liked it. I thought the beginning was a little rushed. I feel like, and I don't know if that was the movie beforehand, if it was because we fired the director and reshot a whole bunch of it, and we changed where it was really going the whole time, and the beginning we just kind of had to like, like, make it work. Um, well, that was going to be my question. Does it feel like uh, I two like the, films smashed together, or does it... It didn't feel like two films smashed together rid of everything to me. That it just seemed like the first 20 or 30 minutes was busy and rushed. To get to the place where they wanted to to tell the story they wanted to tell. Yeah, there's a lot of background for not a ton of reason. I mean, I felt like that could have just even jumped in at the end of that sequence there, just with you know the characters getting separated and going their separate. There was so much exposition that we didn't come back to, but that's also part of almost all the Star Wars films. You know, we have this segment of introduction to characters that well doesn't really make a difference, like the whole beast coming out of the water thing i was like what is this happening here and i was at that point i thought oh no this is the very beginning disaster Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh and and it was very crazy and i mean it was just one of those it was just kind of like they did that just 
like they had to tell some kind of story and they had to make it they were trying to make it not just you know Jabba like Jabba the Hutt was a guy originally Mm -hmm. you know and then oh well we can make him this like big slug looking thing you know it's almost like same type of thing except a big slug it's like a gigantic snake like thing Mm -hmm. you know what I mean it didn't did not make the movie better no I didn't I mean I guess maybe if I thought back to it that's probably like the lowest point of the movie is that character and that beginning of it all yep um that could have probably been done differently but they you know they tried to do stuff just for the sake of doing it i feel like sometimes like let's make a new character we'll make a toy kids will mm-hmm. love it charge double for it yeah well i feel like that is also that mm-hmm. the, the right. crazy toy market is kind of sailing i feel like in a lot of ways where it used to be a whole aisle of star wars toys now it's like you get this much space we got avengers over here batman <laughs> over here we're still trying to get rid of these Justice League toys. You, we can't give you any more real estate. You, you got to fit right here. That's all you got. Um, but I, I mean, I thought it was very interesting. I thought there was a lot of interesting points to like, you know, name drops, and 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 how it all kind of would fit into the bigger Star Wars picture. Um, you know, I didn't like how Han and Chewie met per se. I didn't like how. I mean, again, yeah. it was all part of that fast rush mm-hmm. beginning, and it was just like. Once they were on the run together, it was more interesting. Well, even the segments where he spoke to him were a little goofy. Like I didn't know if they were trying to, like, you know, like how they were trying to portray the fact that Han, like, they never explain why Han knows how to speak Wookiee and can talk right. to Chewie. In he just movie. did. He just did. In the, he just did, but in the... In and you the, accepted in the, it. Well, in the trilogy, in the original trilogy, they've been together for how long? Like, you just assume that... This is years of friendship, and this is years of them together. You know how we got here, we don't know, but we just know there we can. Also, other people who interact with him and speak those languages and know things that are going on. I mean, just well, interacting just does, with Greedo he? back and forth, totally different language, and he's got that. Um, the the stormtroopers talking to Grindon at the very beginning, and he's a series of clicks and beeps talking with people. There's just this understanding that happens between them, and trying to explain it by actually speaking the language. For the first five minutes they interact, and I was like, mm. Yeah, there was a movie that one time. Remember, there was that one movie. Well, no, and it wasn't the same thing. There was, I forget what it was. It was just, they showed subtitles for like the beginning of mm-hmm. it, and then they somehow like transitioned to, they're all speaking different languages. We're just talking in English for so the simplicity of the movie. Um, it was Hunt for, Hunt for Red October or something. They start, it's all in Russian, the first like scene or whatever, and they push in on his face and they come back out and they're yeah, not speaking English. Beautiful. That, the that's awesome. The movie. Just to kind of say, hey, there's, they're not speaking English. Yeah, and then uh, I think it was like the, the 13th Warrior right. with Antonio Banderas. He like spends that whole time around the campfire listening, learning how to speak the language. Mm-hmm. And then once he starts speaking the language, they all just speak English the rest of the movie. Is that true? Is that the same type of thing in that movie, I think? I don't remember much of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's that one not as memorable to me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not nearly as good of a movie as like ah, October. What? Yes. <laughs> but... Um, no, I mean, uh, like I said, I would if if my wife wanted to go see Solo, I would I would happily go see it again. I liked it. Um, after that first 30, 40 minutes, and that's a long time, it got better. Um, I felt like some of the priorities were misplaced in the film, um, like the the Kessel Run quote that he keeps coming back to throughout all the films. I thought was maybe tangential to the storyline itself. Like if that really happened to me, I wouldn't be bragging about the Kessel Run. I'd be talking about everything else that happened to me that we never hear a mention of it at any term whatsoever. Like I would make the Kessel Run more focal to the plot of the story instead of just this, oh, this thing that happened too. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, that scene was weird. Mm-hmm. And the whole, t- like, you don't understand the timing of it. Like, no. it's still that Star Wars time of, like, mm-hmm. the clock is counting down and A New Hope. Oh, wait, it's got more time on it. And wait, <laughs> oh, we, it's down to three seconds, and we've got 30 minutes until this is going to actually happen. Mm-hmm. So, Alden Ehrenreich, how was he He's as fine. Solo? There was a lot of concern B-minus. up front. My yeah, wife I mean, liked him. I was kind of B-. minus. I mean, he wasn't an F. No. He wasn't even, like, a D. I mean, I, I like... I would imagine the best thing for him to have done, and again, I'm the only one here who didn't say it, but would be to clamp down the performance a bit. You know, he you, did. You try to, you're never going to compete with, no. and even Harrison Ford's performance is very dry and, and But it's goofy as well, and this was drier. Um, the, the humor was much more dry than Harrison Ford portrayed it, um, like almost, um, you know, uh, Abbott and Costello kind of level, where Han Solo and the other movies was much more playful. 
you know, a little rambunctious with the lines and self um, uh, demeaning. And he didn't do that kind of thing at all. I thought he was not good casting, but there's almost no way to cast it perfectly. There's almost no good casting that could occur. Um, River Phoenix, young Indiana Jones, right? <laughs> <sighs> Yikes. <laughs> not not going to go in that one at all. <laughs> Letting that lie. Um, so so um, I want one little spoiler. Mm-hmm. Does Chewie live? <laughs> He's in the trailers. And I assume that's Chewie that's the because that's, you know, we got a few Wookiees here or there. And both the trailer ends in a cliffhanger, whether, thinking whether or not Chewbacca is actually going to survive. And kind of odd that we are. How many movies back from where we are currently? Mm-hmm. Um, and Chewbacca. Lives. Well, we're <laughs> after episode one for sure, <laughs> and before A New Hope. But I did. I did not look at the timeline because the time Somebody's, I did want to see it. online. They were saying I'm sure 10 there's years a prior to A New Hope. Ten years prior to A New Hope. Okay. Because you figure Han is in his thirties ish, right? Early thirties ish. Well. Harris Ford himself was mid thirties, so you assume Han Solo is late twenties, twenties, thirties. Yeah, somewhere in that range. I'm yeah, because we're supposed be to believe that Luke Skywalker is like a teenager, aren't we? <laughs> right. 16, supposed to believe that, yes. <laughs> supposed to believe. What's that, funny yes. is that him and Leia are not quite the same age initially, and then once they be, well, once you know. he decided they were twins, then yeah, they're the same age. Now they were yeah, surprised. They were the same age. So, I, one review I, th- I read that was very interesting that made me think. Uh, is the big question for me going into this is was the movie necessary? Was this something a story that had to be told? A story that if you felt like it's better that we that you have it. <laughs> I mean, what what story had to be told? Like, I mean, you know, we didn't need Rogue One. If you take it down, you don't need some of the first three either. <laughs> I was gonna say we could have we could have probably put Force Awakens and Last Jedi together and well, been I guess a little I, mourned. I guess it's more to say, you know, how many mysteries were there about Han, and do we feel that he's a? Are you going to go back and watch four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Uh, well, I guess he's only in seven, but oh, the spoiler! So, ah, um, but is is the character more enriched by the fact that what what I loved about Rogue One was they had some characters you kind of knew, but for the most, I mean, the, obviously the main characters, the main thrust of this were people who. We didn't know about Rogue One. Yeah, we had no idea who they really were. Um, it I mean, was a movie about had, characters um, that didn't that did Tarkin not that didn't exist or were tangential in episode yeah, four. Mon Mothma yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, no, I thought this one was definitely the main characters are characters we do know. Sure. Mm-hmm. For the for the but so does know, the, Chewie and Lando. Does it feel, you know, do you feel like you know more about Han now that it's going to help yeah, you? I mean, go I, back to watch them again. I, don't, I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was I thought mm-hmm. it was interesting. I mean, I, like my friends and I talked about like they could. There's e- easily a Solo 2 story that yes. they could tell in the not-too-distant future yes. before A New Hope and, and get into some other things. Because I, I feel like they did a nice job of <clears throat> connecting the bigger Han And also story not line. answering all the questions. No, not, not by far. There's still tons of mystery. Like, we still don't know how he got totally to, Cor- to Corellia and his home world and, or his quote-unquote home world, yeah. since we're not quite sure. His if origins. That, yeah, I mean, it still doesn't. We still don't know his true origin per se. I mean, we had a better idea with the books, and then the books are man, eh, that don't count anymore. Um, no, I thought I thought there was I thought there was great references to, to Jabba, mm-hmm. and and without talking about Jabba. Yep, not once, not once. That, yeah, not once was Jabba the Hutt mentioned. Um, it, you know, there was. You know, I was very glad that there was no Boba Fett. Yeah, I was worried about that too. Yeah, we don't need to shoehorn Boba Fett in here. We don't need Boba. And everything, we put him in the prequel, and it was like, oh, we did not. We could have left. We could have done without Boba and Django, for that matter, by, by connection. Um, but I thought it was really good. I thought, like I said, once you got through the first thirty minutes, once they were on the run with mm-hmm. Beckett and that whole mission and all that stuff, mm-hmm. then it was all very good, and the, and the connections were nice, and the and the plot was understandable enough to make it a movie. Um, but yeah. So one of my other concerns going in, of course, <laughs> Woody Harrelson in a Star Wars film, did did it work? Was he? Uh, I think he was better than Benicio del Toro in Last Jedi. Yes. I mean, I thought his, and I thought the character in Last Jedi could have been more interesting. But I felt like that. I felt like that whole storyline of Last Jedi with Benicio del Toro and Rose and Finn was such a big, 
Like I could have done. I'm a famous I person. I'd like to be in the movie. I could not have. I could have done. One, I could. You could take that whole storyline out. I don't. I mean, I don't care who you cast in it or what you do. You could take that whole storyline out of the Last Jedi, and I would have been just as fine with it. Yeah. I, I, that whole go on the secret mission, run through the casino, Rose, Finn. Uh, I did really like to that the closure of the who shot first thought there. That oh. was very. I love that. And again, right at the ending there, not, without spoiling it, that made it very clear there. Because I thought that made it a point where I, I wanted something done. And that made it very clear what got done. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like I said, the, the Tobias, his name is Tobias Beckett, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Her- Woody Harrelson's character. He was a, I mean, yeah. he was a really good character. Um, the, the, the Lando story, as the, as the second part goes, might have been like, it had really high points and like really really low points. I thought like, he was acted well. I thought he wasn't written well. No, I feel like there could have been more. Like, they were really trying to get to the parts of the movies in the future that you know. Mm-hmm. Like, how do we, let's make this connection? How do we get the Falcon? What's going to happen? And, and why they is there that disagreement, anger between the two? Yes. Why is it cheating? Not cheating. How is this? And, and we're so on we so see forth. the other side of that. And again, maybe you're leaning a little bit too much toward one way than the other, but we understand that. That yeah. relationship between the two, and it, it was, it was, it was, there was way more good than bad. Mm-hmm. There was way more good than bad. Um, it could have, I mean, maybe it could have, you know, maybe Ron Howard made it a lot better because I could see how it could totally go off the mm-hmm. rails with that Lando well, story. I honestly don't know because they're looking at Ron Howard and his storytelling. It's pretty serious. I mean, it's not like Empire Strikes Back has that perfect combination of really heavy and dark, and light, real funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this played the funny toned down. Okay. There, there were humorous moments in it, but I don't think it was super funny throughout. And Howard's like this, I mean, Arrested Development is this perfect, overt, subtle humor throughout, and I didn't have that flavor from it at all. It felt serious. Um, and that's okay. It just did not have that lightness to it at all well and what's going to be curious going forward is to see how much how much of the original story was was uh Mm. left in how much did ron change it sounded like at first he was just changing a little bit and then it sounded like there was they had massive massive reshoots and then i heard it was the highest budget star wars movie ever and then uh, because they reshot 80 percent of the film um 250 million dollars wasn't it Mm -hmm. well but uh i saw one quote saying it was 400 million dollars uh between um Production, marketing, you know, distribution, and all that stuff. That I mean, this is by far the most expensive. Uh, I, I thought I read two hundred fifty million was the cost of the movie, like production of the movie, two fifty, yeah. and then obviously another one hundred fifty to, <laughs> to get it out there. Because um, no one would hurt, no one would ever hear of it if you didn't have like, all the advertisements. <laughs> like I mean, so, well, and again, I think that that to me, is, and uh, I feel bad. This movie is going to be possibly dogged by this this whole notion of well, would it have been better? Uh, with the original directors, it would have been uh, better like in was, August. <laughs> like, was Ron yeah. Howard handcuffed by the what was already there, or uh, obviously he didn't? Um, he did no recasting, right? So it was it was pretty much the people that uh, were already cast in the movie were the ones that he he used. Um, I guess I was going to ask too about Donald Glover whether or not uh, he stole the show, as many people were expecting him to. Nope. Okay. <laughs> he was good. He was good. He didn't steal I mean, didn't the show. Out. Yeah. Who was your favorite character? I might say Lando. I did. I, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. It wasn't Chewy. It wasn't. I don't. I no. mean, I don't think it was Han. No. It wasn't the robot. Yeah, it was. I didn't. Which. Are we got another funny robot. I thought she was great. <laughs> she was really good, but I don't think she was my favorite. I thought she was. My well favorite written. might be the um, the pilot, the first pilot with like the forearms. Oh, I didn't like him at all. I kind of like. I think I liked him. I, I did think not he was like most him at least. <laughs> I thought he was kind of. He had two good lines at the beginning, and then he became dumb. I, don't know, I, I didn't really like, like those him. characters at all. Did not want them around. Happy to see him go. <laughs> Happy to see him go. I, I liked the the Lando robot a lot. a lot. I thought she was well written. I thought she was great acted. I thought there were things that were just like, how does that happen? It just does. I was like, I, I feel oh. like her storyline though was a little bit over the top. It was like when she died and Lando turned into a raging animal. I was like, 
it's a robot, man. <laughs> Relax. But that personality behind it, it wasn't quite to the level of, um, uh, is it EV9 or what was the one in Rogue One? What was the, the robot there? Alan Tudyk's character. Yeah, I thought uh, that character was brilliant. Yeah, he was really good. Mm-hmm. That robot was really good. Yeah. Um, this wasn't quite to that level, no, but there were a I lot of like over and letters. subtle things, that sort of independence, free will K2SO. kind of thing. K2SO. K2SO. K2. Yeah, I mean, he was really good. I mean, that character was really good. Mm-hmm. He gets a blaster. Why not get a blaster? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And <laughs> that character was really good. And and that, that character is like one-liners and stuff. He's, the, the bigger, he's like, just and sour. Not to spoil just, it. Not to spoil but that, that bigger, like, you know, like her greater mission in life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it was just constant over, and you know what I mean? And that just, that part of the story. For me, it was 20 minutes. I liked, I mean, I liked the explanation of... Mm-hmm. Lando with the pilot, the the robot, you know, the Falcon, how it all fits together. That part was really well done and really interesting. Um, well, it's another one of those things where some things were done really well and some things not not as well. Um, it's uneven. It doesn't feel all the way around. No, uh, yeah, but I does it feel that. Star Wars? Does it fit? Yeah. within. Okay. Yeah, I think. It I does. think it does a really good job of fitting within what it was supposed to, mm-hmm. and talking about the much big. Like I said, talking about the much bigger picture. You you pretty much know where you're going the whole time. Sure. And you're still you're not as like I, I thought. Rogue One did a great job of tell. We've said before telling a story that you knew you knew exactly, exactly how it's going to end. You know exactly. how it's going to end, and you still didn't know how it was going to end right. when they when they. Finished it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rogue One was really well done. And like I said, the more I watch Rogue One and not watch the original trilogy, four, five, or six in a long time, I have a harder and harder time not saying Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Um, it's probably number two for sure behind Empire, but I haven't watched Empire in years. But this one was in that same book. Just Rogue hit all the right notes at mm-hmm. all the right time. And this, like you said, had highs and lows throughout it. Mm-hmm. There were things that were well done and things that were not well done. I mean, as soon as you start casting characters with other actors, something's not going to go all the way across. Sure. Um, like, and you're never going to make everybody happy. No. You're guys, replacing Hans. You're replacing Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Do you guys watch um, uh, Big Bang Theory or Young Sheldon? No. Laurie Metcalf plays a part of a, a mother in um, Big Bang Theory of Sheldon, and the um, young Sheldon has this nearly perfectly cast woman playing his mother and we looked around like she's really amazing how did where do they find her it's her daughter so her daughter is playing the role of her younger right 25 years ago and she's brilliant at it but she's related to this person she bears this you know look a lot of similarities Forrest got kids they could have had I don't know I don't know but that actors but yeah I mean it just as bad as it could have been, I thought it was much, much better. Mm-hmm. I went with low expectations. I would, I would gladly see it again. Yes. Yes. So you think there's going to be a solo too? You said that they, no. there's enough points there. I don't think no. they'll do it, but okay. I think they could. And I think now, I think this movie is going to get unfairly judged correct. for not making as much money. Correct. People are going to slam it and say it's not good. But the bulk of the world, the, the bulk of the viewers that you need to get to make like $500 million are not going to go see this movie. No. It's just going to get forgotten in this weekend and this this box office current situation. Now, the, of course, the issue is going to be some of the headlines are already saying, oh, you know, Solo's <laughs> failure of $100 million uh, is going to put possibly the Boba Fett story, the Obi-Wan story um, coming forward, you know, that prospect going to happen in Jeopardy. My whole thing is this was kind of it. The, this is, if there was, if you were to ask people characters, you know, what's the one character that you might really want to see an origin story to? I would imagine Star Wars fans are mostly going to be interested in Han Solo more than any other. Um, I not as much in Boba. You're not going to be as interested in Boba Fett origin story. No, Perhaps not anymore. Obi-Wan. No, I would have been. And Obi Wan, we kind of like a Boba Fett story. That okay. might be interesting to me because they, you know, failed so badly in the other ones. The prequel. Um, yeah, yeah. That that was such a disaster. Um, and while Han Solo is the most compelling character, the most interesting character in that universe. Um, has a lot of potential to just fail, yeah. and it did. So it, why did this movie do poorly at the box office? Because <laughs> it's five months after Last Jedi, and it's slammed in a box office with two other juggernauts. Well, I also think the buzz coming into it was And bad. the buzz was low, yeah. 
They started with low buzz beforehand. Right. I mean, I, I think you should have – if you put this movie in August or September, I feel like you make way more money. And I know the summer, they're like, oh, the summer. But if people want to see it, they're going to go see it. I would still go on Thursday to see it. Yeah, put The same people are going to go see it. A week before, a week after Mission Impossible. I mean, that kind of time where it's sort of the not-quite movie of that. Um, but I also think – you know, going into this six, seven, eight months ago, plagued with the disaster, all these problems, reshoot, yeah. had to reshoot, yeah. I mean, it def- fired the director. I mean, all this controversy that occurred hung on it. Yeah. But my, my thing is, <laughs> Disney had owns both the Avengers movie and mm-hmm. Solo. They had, the, I mean, they couldn't have done anything about And Deadpool. kind of Deadpool. Well, right. Kind but, of but Deadpool. But they, they really couldn't. No, force Deadpool to go somewhere else. But they certainly could have spread these two movies out mm-hmm. apart from each other. They moved this up, uh, didn't they? Yes. And there's nothing coming out in December now for Star Wars, is there? Uh, no, I don't think we're so. Empty the, we're empty this December, aren't we? I think it's, so. It's the next December that should be Episode Nine, if two years hold, right? They're doing two years for these for these new movies, uh, aren't they? I don't know if it's the summer of uh, 19. Or is it, is it May? Is it, or I mean, December of 19. I think I just it's a think different it was, release I mean, I think it was now. too soon. And like I said, I you're going against it. If it's getting bad reviews, and... You're going against Deadpool, which people are giving great reviews. And Avengers is still, you know, Avengers still made $17 million in week, what are they, four, five? Well, I think putting it in this whole glut just took away from them. But summer movies now only have a week or two, and then they're done. And that's why Black Panther can get five, six weeks, because it's not in the summer. Yeah, and there was there was obviously t- I, like I looking at the box office. I there's no way Avengers is going to catch Black Panther domestically. That's scary. It's just not going to catch it. Now gl- globally, it blew it away. It's right. already passed it. Globally, it'll it'll right. clear two billion dollars and yeah. it'll be bigger global than Black Panther. But that's because Black Panther got repeat view after re- you can't make seven hundred million dollars without getting repeat views. You just can't. Right. You know what I mean? And like more people are prone to go see Deadpool two again if they liked it than see Solo, and that's where you get forty some million dollars again. Because I guarantee people went and saw Deadpool 2 a second time, time this weekend. Well, it's, how much did it make? It made 100 or so. So it's still a decrease by half, right? It made 100 some million dollars. Yeah, but it's also going against Solo. I'm sure people went Truth. and saw Solo instead of seeing Deadpool again right. or Avengers again. Right. Solo did hurt their box office numbers also. I mean, yeah. it, Solo's numbers were just hurt for a litany of reasons mm-hmm. not totally related to Deadpool 2, Avengers, and Book Club. But Book Club did not have a, as big of a drop as it normally would have. <laughs> Only 25% off. Oh We're out of time. Oh. Um, so Action Point, Adrift, and Upgrade. Who's going to knock off Solo Nothing. for this week? Nothing. I, I think the big question is what? how much does Solo drop? Um, and yeah, I wouldn't expect it would be under Deadpool 2. They'll probably remain the same 1, 2, 3. But they're going to be close. Wow. A Star Wars movie that's only number one for one week. I Probably the only time ever, I would imagine. Well, the re release. I mean, what about the what about the special uh, editions? So, we'll have to look it up. A little we'll, different. We'll check it out and we'll that. get back uh, next week on Inside Mini Weekly. Thanks for joining us.